Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here and I am back for another technology, assistive technology kind of video. And this time I just want to give you my thoughts so far on iOS 15. Uh, right up front I just want to say that this is not going to be a comprehensive video on everything that is out there. A lot of other sites and podcasts and blogs and whatever have covered that in a lot more detail and have done a good job already. So what if especially if you're blind or vision impaired, I would highly recommend going to the AppleViz website, www.appleviz.com. Um they have, you know, forum posts on the new features that are in iOS 15. They have a post on some of the bugs that have been introduced unfortunately in iOS 15 and then they have a really good podcast if you just go to your podcast uh, player of choice and look up the Apple Viz podcast one of their recent episodes is like the 50, the 50 new features in iOS 15 or something like that I don't remember the exact wording but I listened to it and he did a fantastic job of just going through like talking about and demoing, giving a very quick overview of a lot of these features that you can choose to look up in more detail yourself. As far as upgrading goes, I, you know, I would just say there's a lot of, <laughs> I see both sides. Um, I see a lot of people who are just super negative and like, oh, I'm not doing that. We got, there, God forbid, there's a bug, um, you know, and then just being super negative. And then I've seen people that say, oh, it's actually not bad at all. And, and to be fair, you know, depending on what your use case is, you may or may not want to upgrade. That's why I would highly encourage you to go visit um, this AppleViz thread and see what the bugs are. You know, may, like I know there's a, a weird Braille input bug where if you <clears throat> use a Braille display and you're typing in a long message or something, there was a bug that was in an earlier version of iOS that went away and then in iOS 15 seems to be back where... Um, as you're typing a long message, it may put in like weird word, like just random words or they, it'll put the words in random places for some reason. And I don't know why. So if you're a Braille display user, you may want to hold off. If you are a heavy Braille user, you may want to hold off. Um, if you don't use a Braille display, not a big deal. Um, I've heard a couple of different things about the, um, the, the Apple wallet kind of a thing, being able to use cards. Um, it says in there that it, you know, it doesn't really work with voiceover. And then I've heard other people say that it works okay for them. So again, if it's, if it's a feature that you're going to use, if it's going to really impact your workflow, you know, you may want to hold off until another point release. Um, if you feel like you can work around it, uh, go ahead and grab the update. So, you know, you just have to use um, some discretion, do a little research, use your common sense and figure out what it is in your workflow that you need and whether that will be impacted. Um, so with that stuff out of the way, um, I want to talk about a few features that I think I, uh, that I've really been liking in iOS 15. If you are a low vision user, there's a lot here to like. There's a lot here to like. Um, they did separate the magnifier from the... It's still under accessibility, but I guess it's its own app now. And you can still get to it, like if you've added it to Control Center, you know, you can still access it here. So there it is in the bottom left-hand corner. I have Magnifier. That's still the same as iOS, um, iOS 14 and earlier. Um, but here's where it gets really cool. So thankfully we've had dark mode now for what? I think, was it iOS 13 or 14 that put dark mode in? Uh, we still have dark mode. But what if, you know, there's those pesky apps that don't honor the dark theme, um, and you had to really just go in and, you know, if you really wanted to have it dark, you'd go into accessories, or you'd go, you know, you'd go and turn on your, um, you know, turn on invert colors or something, or smart invert. Well, now I'm going to turn voiceover on. Voiceover on. Linus folder. 32 apps. And <clears throat> there is a setting. Doc, settings. I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to General go. General button. 
Control, display, home screen, accessibility. Accessibility. Button. Accessibility features help. You customize your iPhone. Side button. Rows 7 to 22. Accessibility shortcut. Per app settings. Button. Per app settings. This is cool. So just like how you've kind of been able to do with activities with voiceover, you can kind of change on a per app basis. App customization. Now, Heading. more general accessibility features like for low vision or other things can be set on a per app basis. So this is cool. And the way I use it, I have like on this screen. Add app button. App cost, add app button. I can add an app. So basically what you do is you say, I want to add an app. And then you choose that app from the list, and then you and then you set each one of these accessibility settings for that app, and then it'll behave only when you're in that specific app. So it's really cool. So I can add an app. Clubhouse button. But I've got I've got Actions Clubhouse. Available. Facebook button. My account button. That's Actions one of my available. Pay apps. That's my Verizon button. Okay. Actions available. Excel Energy button. So I've Actions got three Bill Pay apps that are a little bit ugly with their bright white colors and light text. So these particular apps, let's say I go into My Verizon, button. My Verizon. Actions of display and text size, heading. I'll just flick through these so you can kind of see what types of things you can do here. So in addition to doing your voiceover activities that you've been able to do before. Bold text, default, button. Bold text, it's whatever the default, It's everything starts as default. So whatever you have in your global accessibility settings, it'll honor that until you change it here. Larger text, default, button. Button shapes, default, but on slash off labels, default. Reduce transparency, default. Improve contrast by reducing trans increase contrast, default, button. Increase color contrast between differentiate without color, default, button. Replaces user interface items that rely so smart invert on button. So smart invert, I said, okay, this app is a lot of white, so I'm gonna turn smart invert on. So my air on my phone will behave as normal until I go into this app, and when it does. Um, it'll smart invert, giving me a nice dark background, make it easier to see. And when I, as soon as I leave the app and go home, boom, it goes back to normal. So that's really sweet. Smart invert reverses the colors of the motion heading. Reduce motion default button. So you can reduce motion. Reduce the motion of the user inter. Auto play video previews def Auto play video pre. Auto play and video. And that's it. So those are the additional accessibility settings button. that you can do under the per app settings that is a really physical and cool motor feature. Heading, guided really access like that um rows so 7 to 22 for low vision users especially like you know you don't want to keep having to go in and out of settings or you know maybe even the control center if it's there or you don't you know you don't have to even set like the side button to say oh i want a quick turn um magnifier on or smart invert on like well magnifier you would still have to but with uh, like the invert colors and stuff. Per app settings button. Per app settings. That's a gem right there. Um, so there's a, while we're on the topic of low vision and invert colors and dark themes and darkness, another little thing uh, Apple did that either I totally overlooked or I forgot about is Safari has now added extensions so you can do different extensions with mobile safari why do i say that for low vision users well because if you recall earlier on the channel i did a uh, i did a, a, a review for the dark reader add-on or extension for chrome on your you know on your computer browsers your desktop laptop browsers well, it just so happens that Dark Reader is also available now for uh, for Safari. Settings, Doc, Safari. So if I go into Double Safari, tap to open. You now here's another thing that I like. Not only did they add extensions, they got rid of that stupid Rolodex view where you just had like kind of a flip book of pages. Now as a low vision user, I can just like you have two columns of these ta mini tab windows and I can li literally just see oh that's what this tab is I can touch them cyber war or I can a cyber store Matthew Riker audiobooks vertical cyber ghost tickets 2000 the verge tab oh, 15 yeah. so 24 let's go to the verge skip to main content in page and leg. look at what we got Swap. here we have the verge.com page 1 of 12 but we Web have wonderful dark theme we have our images are still normal I'm not using invert color I'm not using per app settings Instead, I'm using the Dark Reader extension just like you would find on your computer browsers. So, yes, it's getting better. 
you know, we've now we have two other ways that we can enforce the darkness. Um, I've tried it on several websites. It's worked fine. Interestingly, um, I've tried it in... It's been a little hit and miss. Um, Twitter, like if you load a page from a link, I think like one time I had it look where it still loaded kind of the Safari sort of extension and it made it dark, but that doesn't always happen. Um, I mean, I can try it really fast. Settings, act, mail, act, Twitter, active. Let's go into Twitter. Amazon News, verified. What's it like leading the team at one of our Amazon Air Hubs? Okay, so Mountain, let's just Amazon go into this. Profile photo, Amazon News, thing. link, bit. So if I go into slash real this link, text field, address, 10% about Amazon.com. Yes, it does. Page, Amazon Air Leaders, page 2 of 20. Oh, no, it doesn't. Picture this, page 3 of 20, yeah, page 4 so of 20. Yeah, so I've had... Timeline, I've button. had mixed results with that. Doc, I Safari. swear I've seen it, I swear I've seen it uh, flicker on one time. But as far as if you're using Safari, um, that does work. Um, Dark Reader is a four a four dollar purchase from the App Store, and I gladly paid the four bucks because I live by Dark Reader on the desktop, so I use that all the time. And having it now on Safari is beautiful. So that's another low vision thing that I really like. Um, settings. Double settings. tap to open. Let's go back use into here. Settings, screen time, button. Okay, so it popped us back out this level. Um, so you have a few Those different one to 14, things. Four sounds and haptics, button, focus, button. This new focus mode. I'm going to pop in here really quick. I'm Do not, not really going to enable button. it, but I'll at least tell you that it's there. Um, this could be useful, and I may add my own special, you know, instances for, you know, sleeping or when I'm playing drums or if I'm recording maybe or streaming. Uh, I'll turn some of that off. I'll, I'll probably make some um, focus heading. Some focus modes for that. But basically, what this allows you to do is it's not just do not disturb on and off. You can really fine tune how you want things to behave. So when you're at work, or when you're exercising, or when you're sleeping, or whatever, you can say, "I only want these people." to contact me or I want nobody to contact me and I want notifications from these apps so if I'm at work maybe I want to have um, I want to hear from my work contacts and I want to get notifications from apps that I use at work but nothing else and if I use my phone for projects outside of work I don't want to hear about work things during personal time just to kind of get away from the office type stuff you know working all the time so it's got a lot of different uses but if add i button. flick here do not disturb I can, add button. i can add my own custom um my custom event do not disturb button but we've got do not disturb as a preset sleep button sleep as a preset personal setup button and personal i can set that up work setup button. or work so we, i just went through like personal or work time you can do those. Focus silences, alerts, and notify share across devices. On. And you can turn share across devices. So that can actually be really nice. I can set these up, and then when I get my new phone, or if I want them on my iPad, those things will honor um, these different focus modes as well. What's also nice is you can set them to be around a certain location. So when it sees, oh, I've gotten to the office, or I've gotten home, um, I can set it by location, say, oh, well, when I get to the office, activate this focus mode, or when I get home, activate this focus mode. So you can really kind of fine-tune and get rid of some of your uh, constant notifications clutter if you so choose. So that is a new iOS focus 15 button. feature. Let me go back into accessibility. General, control center, display and brightness, home screen, but accessibility, button, accessibility and features this help. One, I had to look it up again because it, it's buried. Um... It is buried. Um, there is a background noise feature. It's kind of like what a lot of these nature sounds apps will do, but it's just built into iOS. There's like six different sound types you can do. So people who want like more of a relaxing or just kind of white noise in the background, there's a new feature, and it's under the accessibility and hearing section. Vision, heading, 
physical and motor, hearing, We're heading. Go to hearing. Hearing devices, but sound recognition off. RTT slash ETY, audio slash visual button. Audio slash visual. That's where they hide it. Audio heading. And you can customize the audio background sounds off. Button. Background sounds is what they call it. Now you can also, if this is a feature that you want to use, you can go under the settings app and go to control center and add this to your to your um, control center so you don't have to go into this buried menu every time but i'm just going to go in here background sounds off button. so background, background sounds, sounds off double tap to toggle setting if i turn them on background sounds off on okay there we got our rain i have not heard these before so okay so we got our rain sound rain button balance noise right balance noise let's see balance noise selected balance noise Balance noise. Ooh, that would be, especially with headphones, I don't like that. That's just static. Right noise. Selected. Right noise. Ooh, I don't like that. Right either. noise. Ocean. Dark noise. Right noise. Dark noise. Selected. Dark noise. Okay. Dark noise. Almost sounds like an air conditioner kind of thing. Ocean. Ocean. That Selected. Would be right. Ocean. Ocean. Downloading 18%. Oh, okay. We're downloading. Okay. Selected. Rain. Actions of F. Selected. Rain. That one's not too bad. Stream. Stream. Selected. Stream. Stream. Downloading 12%. Okay. It'd be cool to have a thunderstorm. Selected. Because a lot stream. of people like thunderstorms too. But uh, I'm going to put it back to rain. Actions of selected. Rain. And then I'm going to turn Background it sounds. off. Background sounds. On. Off. And then you, in addition to choosing which one you want and turning them on and off, you do have a few other settings. So rain volume. 60. Adjust. Rain volume. 60. I can do adjustable. The volume of it. Use when media is playing. On. So Double tap to I toggle can choose setting. to do it when media is playing or not. So I can say, oh, when me, you know, if I start a video, turn that off, or a audio, or a podcast, or whatever. Volume with media twenty adjustable. Okay, volume with media. Swipe up or down. Okay. Play sample button. Stop sounds when locked off. Stop. Double sounds tap to toggle setting. Pretty obvious again. So when you lock the screen, you can either keep it on or just stop it. Um, so I, that's something that I don't know that I would use, but I know a lot of Background people are sounds. looking Off. forward to it. So I wanted to point that out there. That is a unique thing. And especially with how buried it is under accessibility. Like I said, I had to Google how to, or where it was, cause I knew it was a feature, but I couldn't remember where the heck I could find it. Um, audio slap hearing devices, but let's go into voice one to 14 voiceover vision heading. I want to point out here. Um, so voiceover specifically, um, you have your rotor like you've always had, and I don't know about you, but sometimes the rotor can be a little bit cluttered because it gets to be, you start adding so many things into it. Uh, well, now you might be able to get rid of some of the settings that you put in there that you want to toggle on and off. Because if I do a two finger quadruple tap for tapping four times, Voiceover settings. Heading. Voiceover settings. This is a new gesture in iOS 15. Filter. Search field. I can search Double tap to for edit. a certain feature if I want. I'll just flick through these really fast so you can see. Activities. Off. Button. So we got Adjustable. activities. Always speak notifications. Off. Ad audio ducking. On. Adjust. Braille alert messages. On. Ad Braille auto advance. Fives. Braille input. Contracted rail. Braille output. Contracted rail. Braille cables. English. U.S. System. Caption panel. Off. Adjust. Direct touch. On. Adjust. Gesture direction, automatic. Hardware typing feedback, words, but hints, on, adjust. Image descriptions, on. Language, English, US. Large cursor, on. Media descriptions, speech. Navigate images, always. Navigation style, flat, but phonetic feedback, character. Now I'm going to stop there. Navigation style, flat. Navigation style, flat. Um, I have not really played with this because a couple reasons, but this is also a new thing. In iOS 15, um, if you're familiar with using the Mac, one of the things that would drive me crazy, but I could see how it had its uses and it, you know, could make certain tasks easier, where you had, you could navigate kind of by different levels in a way. Like you, you can, let's say I want to, I have a screen that has a left sidebar uh, and then it has a right sidebar. Maybe there's a bottom panel or something, you know, you could move and skip that left sidebar and go right to the content or you could interact with that left sidebar and then manipulate the controls or items within that so right now we're on the traditional flat style where you just go through everything the way you've always done it 
Um, but if you switch it, you know, you can kind of do a more hierarchical, hierarchical, I, I can't say that word, um, navigation. So like I said, you're going to be able to take two fingers and swipe left and right to jump between these different areas of the screen. It's almost like, think about it like different containers or something. Now, the other reason that uh, on mine, when I upgraded, it was off by default, which is nice because I have in iOS 14, I set a custom gesture for my two finger left and right flick to be navigate by heading because I got tired of like when I navigate web pages or even different areas and settings here. Um, places that use headings, I don't like, it's just a quick, convenient way to get around. And I don't always want to have to adjust my rotor to do that. So what I do then is I have it, you know, swipe right with two fingers as next heading, swipe left with two fingers as previous heading. I can have my rotor set however I want, characters or words or whatever, but I can still do that flick and quickly jump around a web page uh, or other HTML interface a lot faster. So I'm going to stick to that, but if you want more of like a Mac style um, hierarchy navigation, you can definitely do that. Uh, and that's under this quick, um, this voiceover settings thing. Phonetic feedback, character so and phonetic. A few more buttons, options here. Adjustable. Pitch change. On. Punctuation. Off. Button. Screen recognition. Off. Adjust. Send to HDMI. Off. Adjust. Slide to type. On. Software typing feedback. Okay, so characters there's a lot and words. More settings here. Good adjustable. God, man. Sounds. Off. Speak rotor confirmation. Speaking rate. 60. Typing style. Touch type. Volume. 70. Volume. Wow. Button. And that's all of them. So, I mean, just looking at all those, look at all the options and customization that we've now had with voiceover over the past couple versions now, you know, and for the people, I kind of, I kind of laugh in a way, but I kind of, mm, I don't know, like the people that say, Apple doesn't care about accessibility. They just, everything gets worse and blah, 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 blah. you know, I'm, I'm like, dude, they've added so much stuff. Is it perfect? No. Are there bugs that drive me crazy sometimes? Yes. Some of the focus jumping issues drives me nuts. But overall, I mean, voiceover on iOS and iPadOS has become very functional, very useful, not to mention customizable. So, I, yes, I know there's things that can be really frustrating, but like, and I wish that Apple would listen to the feedback, especially during the beta cycle when people put them in. Um, I wish that some of those would really get fixed because uh, I've submitted some accessibility bugs and feedback the last three iOS versions, let's say. Um, but overall, no. I mean, I, I, you know, if any anytime Apple comes out with a new device, be it a tablet or a phone or a watch, or maybe if they start doing a headset, eventually. You know, if they start doing some kind of an augmented or virtual reality headset, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and almost assume that they're going to have some level of blind and low vision accessibility built in because, you know, since like mid to late 2000s, that's what they've done. So, you know, for the people that are, I mean, that are just saying, oh, this is the worst Apple's ever done and how dare they treat us this way. I, I really I really don't buy that. Um, yes, things can be frustrating. Yes, it's easy to complain about stuff. But, God, we have it, like, th look at all the things we can do with our phones. I mean, and look at how complex these phones are. You know, there are bugs that sighted people um, deal with uh, all the time as well. Um, you know, when your phone, like, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to like think of how to describe it, but there's like, your phone can do so many things, you know, that of course there's going to be some bug that gets overlooked because, it, you know, your phone can do 8 million and one things. Um, so the, with the fact that it works as well as it does is pretty damn impressive in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> but back to the voiceover stuff, um, the, you see all of those settings, just like your rotor, you can customize what is in those vo in that voiceover screen. So if you want to trim that down just to the settings that you only use, that you would regularly want to turn on and off, 
you can do that just like how you can rearrange and add and remove things from your rotors. So um, that is a new voiceover feature. Um, and I keep forgetting to try this. Uh, we're going to do a little experiment. One of the last things I want to show you is some of the stuff that you can do with the camera. Um, they've added this new live text thing where if it detects some text in your camera, kind of like how Seeing AI does, you're, I'm going to use this on a document, which is Doc, not settings. really what it's recommended Double tap to open. for use. necessarily. But if you have, like, if you're looking at a sign, you're looking at some packaging, or if you're just looking around and it detects that there's some text in there, um, you know, you can, you can uh, access that text. So we're going to try the camera. Movies app. folder, home, pay app store, photography folder, so we're gonna go five to apps, the camera. opening camera, double tap, camera, take picture, button, zero people, text detected. Okay, text detected. Zoom, one, dot, detect text, button. Detect text. Detect text. Text detected, text detected. Share, menu item. Now let's see what it does. Share, menu item. Tilt right, level. Now that you're enrolled in the Health Partners plan, take a few simple steps to set yourself up for success. Wow. Log on to your online account or use the MyHP app. That's pretty fast and that's pretty Schedule sweet. Schedule preventive care. Most plans help cover preventive services like you'll get real-time access, zero people. Annual checkups. So it's still looking it's the at best the way to stay behind, healthy. But copy. And right. I also have above the text. I have some items. Select all. Copy. Menu copy. item. Select all. Select menu all. Item. Look up. Menu item. Look up. Translate. Menu Translate. Item. Translate. Share. Menu item. Or share. Tilt right. That's really all the features that you would want for something like this. So, oh, maybe I'm walking somewhere and I have to translate something, or tilt right. I, I want to share some text with someone and say, "Is this what really what it is?" Or you know, whatever happens to be. Zero people. That works really well. And you can do the Tilt same right. thing in Home, existing camera. photos. So if you have photos in your photo library, maybe um, you want to make sure, maybe you're going to share something and you want to like, oh, um, like a friend of mine, coworker of mine, he took a picture of his, um, his uh, vaccination, um, vaccination card. Because we had to send, you know, we have to send them in for work. And so it's like, oh, does this have the information that I want? You know, I could make sure that, hey, this is the right picture that I'm sending you. Um, you know, or if there's just some, you're looking back at your memories and, oh, there's some text detected. Maybe I'm, uh, we're standing in front of a sign for a, um, like a monument or something. So there's a lot of really cool uses for this, both with existing photos and camera apps and it's really just that easy it'll say text detected you find the viewfinder area you flick to the right you say detect text and boom you're in and it also is, seems to be doing a little bit better on recognizing um like recognizing things in Was photos it? there's still some really weird descriptions here and there so, you know, it's, again, it's not going to be perfect. It's, it's AI, but like it, it does generally do a better job of like, um, recognizing, oh, this is exactly what is on the table here. You know, it might mistake a computer f screen for a TV or vice versa, or it doesn't know that, oh, my TV is on a stand. It thinks it's mounted to the wall. Um, but generally, um, in the little bit I've played with the camera and just having it passively, recognize things with voiceover in the viewfinder it's worked fairly well so you know they're making gradual improvements to that um another big thing is you can actually dictate with your dictation and siri stuff offline you don't have to finally be connected to the internet in order to do simple things like turn your bluetooth on and off set a timer whatever and you can dictate text into text fields without having to be online. Holly, frickin' Luya. Um, what I did notice when I first upgraded to iOS 15, I was a little bit worried about this because I tried that knowing that it was a feature. And it worked horribly uh, right away. 
But I think what was happening is that it was downloading probably the information, the text database or something that it needed for that to work, you know, like this one-time uh, stuff. So when I would do a dictate, I would say something and it would just sit there for like 10 seconds and go, do, 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 no feedback whatsoever. It would kind of almost just freeze. And then eventually it would just, you know, dictate everything that I put in there. Um, so I was like, oh, that's not good. Why is it being, but then, like I said, I, I just let it sit there for a while, do its thing, do its whatever background downloading, refresh stuff, came back to it a little while later, did the dictation, boom, just super fast. Um, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, another thing that they did do, uh, I haven't really played with Mail it yet. Spotlight. Let's see if Eight it shows search. up here. Text field is editing. Search. Okay. Insertion um, point. Send a message to tackle Billy's messages. So, yeah, um, if store. people share uh, content with you, somebody shares you a link, a news article in Safari, or they share a YouTube video or whatever, when you go into certain apps, you'll have, um, you'll have things show up, like shared with me, and then you'll see the relevant content within the app. So if I open, let's say, the news app, and I see any uh, articles that somebody was shared with me, I don't have to go back to like, oh, who sent me that? Or where did I find that again? Go back to that email or that text message or whatever. Now it'll just kind of show up with a shared to me thing and I can peruse it when I want to within the app, when the app itself. Haven't really used that, but that could be a potentially nice feature. Um, like I said, this isn't gonna be a comprehensive thing. These are just some of the things that I immediately found to be helpful. I haven't really found any game-breaking bugs. Like, it's been pretty smooth. Some of the, like I said, it was a little sluggish, a little choppy at first because it was doing some background updates and stuff uh, when I first did the update. But like I said, give it a, give it a little bit, a little while to settle once you've rebooted into iOS 15. And things have run pretty much about the same speed as they have in iOS 14. So if, you're, if your device could run iOS 14, um, you should be pretty good with iOS 15. The most useful things, the things that I find really the most helpful, are honestly the per app settings, where I can say, hey, I want to have uh, a, an inverted color dark theme for apps that don't support it, and then having the dark, re granted I downloaded the $4 app, but I can have extensions. So if you have a password manager that you like, or you want to use dark reader, um, you know, more will be coming, I'm sure. But like having these Safari extensions is really nice. I like the new tabs instead of the Rolodex view that they had before. I like the way they do the tabs in, uh, in Safari. They're just little things like that. There's, you know, I don't know that there's any one thing that's really groundbreaking, but just really convenience things. Um, and I know there's other voiceover things. I'm trying to think if there's any major voiceover thing that I could call out, but I showed you the settings. I showed, showed you the um, couple other odds and ends here. So those are, those are some things that I... Um, like in iOS 15. Again, I haven't, I don't really have too much to complain about because I've found having pretty heavily use it, used this in the last two, three days, uh, I've done many, many things with it. You know, I've used the camera, I've used many apps, I've paid bills, I've just, you know, used my phone the way I always do. Um, and just having these little conveniences, the, the dark themes and dark reader and everything, that works really well. VoiceOver seems to behave. I don't notice too many focus jump issues. I still do, I still do notice a few here and there. Like when I minimize um, a YouTube video and then you go down to the bottom to close it, sometimes it still likes to jump uh, there. But overall, I don't seem to have quite as many... Um, focus issues, um, I could be wrong and I'll report back if I do later, but, um, it seems fairly decent. Um, 
And I will <clears throat> give you more feedback in a future video because, yes, I did break down and I did end up purchasing the 512 gig iPhone 13 Pro Max. And uh, I'm get, I should hopefully get that on Friday. So I hope to play with that and get that all set up over the weekend. Run it through its paces. Maybe next, uh, maybe next Wednesday or Saturday I can try to do an uh, iPhone 13 review for you guys and talk about uh, you know again i'm really interested with their new cameras and i'm just really curious to see how the the magnifier is going to work because I, I was watching a video yesterday uh with people reviewing the new phones and one in particular had like these really good side-by-side -side comparisons of some of some stills where they had like one of them was this um, like front yard shot where you saw the garage and the basketball hoop at night. And on the iPhone 11, oh yeah, it was night. I mean, it was every, everything was dark. Like everything just, you know, didn't stand out very well. The 12 was a lot better and then the 13 was even better than that. But I mean, you could still tell it was night, but it looked, you know, with the, the night mode or whatever, it looked just a lot it almost had like almost like a well-lit daylight quality to it even though you could still kind of tell it was nighttime so i'm thinking you know using this with the magnifier and if you don't turn your flash on or you're in class or something you don't have the best lighting situation your camera might be able to help compensate for that and then the other one that they had showed you know this new macro zoom that is on the on the pro side of the iPhone 13s, the Pro and the Pro Max. I'm very curious to check those out because as I zoom in really far, um, they were showing like really close-ups on like a blueberry and a, a strawberry, I think it was. And they showed the comparison even from the iPhone 12 series to the 13. And the strawberry really stood out to me because like on the 12, you, you were zoomed in, but it was really like the, it was blurry. It was really kind of blurry if you zoomed in way too far. But on the 13 Pro Max, if you zoomed in, like you still saw all the little detail of said strawberry. So that might help with font clarity, image clarity overall depending on what it is that you're magnifying so you know being low vision if you need to zoom in really far you know maybe like i said i'm going to do some experimenting myself when i get my phone hopefully later this week and i'll report back on that because um that could potentially be interesting especially if they increase image stabilization more than what i have in my iphone 10s max here so, uh, yeah, I have a few things, especially camera-wise, that I'm interested in checking out on the new phone. I'm really looking forward to seeing what 5G speeds are because I live in an urban area. If I leave my, if I leave my Faraday cage, <clears throat> I mean apartment building, um, I should be able to find out 5G speeds. I can uh, check out the new better screen with the, re with the 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, you know, I'll have the LTE, I'll have the LiDAR, I will have, of course, the performance increase that you get with your better processor. So there's a lot of things, um, again, maybe a lot of subtle things um, that I think will add up to be a pretty interesting uh, phone. So look forward to that in the near future. But those are some thoughts and impressions of iOS 15. Overall, seems pretty solid so far. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can also follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. On Twitch, twitch.tv slash illegally cited. Illegally cited.com. And right here on YouTube. So until next time, we'll wrap it up here and I will chat with you guys again later.